What's up, wizards? I'm going to talk about something today that I've had on my mind for a while, and that is CodeGen tools. These tools help you basically make TypeScript types out of things that TypeScript can't read. Let's say you want to access a GraphQL endpoint, but you want to do it in a type safe way. Well, you would run a CLI that points to that GraphQL endpoint and then extract out all of the types so that you can access it. You can do this with REST APIs as well if you're using OpenAPI or something. But that's the idea of CodeGen is typing the untypable. And I think it's really cool, but it has some weird downsides. And I'm going to talk about how you can fix those downsides and make CodeGen great again. Let's start by looking at an example project, one that uses GraphQL CodeGen. I'm super familiar with GraphQL CodeGen. I put it into production a few years ago, and I really like it. This is a Next.js project. We've got all of the usual Next.js files. We've got pages, we've got styles and stuff, but we've also got a GraphQL schema. And this schema has various types in it. So we have a project, we have a task that's inside a project. Under Understanding this isn't important, but you can see that it defines a bunch of different ways that we can access data. And if we're inside a TypeScript project, we want to be able to access this in a type safe way. Because you can see it almost looks like TypeScript, but it isn't. And so, of course, TypeScript can't read this. I'm going to run pnpm run cogen, and that runs GraphQL cogen on a file called cogen.ts. Cogen.ts looks like this. We have a schema, which is pointing at our local schema, at the documents, which I'll show you in a second. And it generates a file called source graph GraphQL types.ts. Let's take a look at source GraphQL types.ts and whoo! boy, okay. We have some pretty scary looking types. We have some helper types at the top. We have a bunch of different types that correspond to things in our schema. And then at the bottom, we have something called tasks query. Tasks query actually comes from a file called tasks.graphql, which lives up in GraphQL tasks.graphql. And this is basically a call to the API to get certain data back. If we have the query on the left and then the generated type on the right, you can see that we have tasks, which is a tasks array which has ID, name, and description, which has ID, name, and description, and has a project which has an ID and a name string. So this tasks query is being generated from here. And if I remove name and description, and I rerun my code gen, then you can see that the tasks array now only has an ID in it. So to summarize, we're accessing a GraphQL API, generating some types from it, and using those types in our application. But using those types in our application is kind of harder than you might think. And this, I think, is problem number one. Let's imagine that we've built a component called task row here, which would be like a row in a table that takes in an individual task. Inside the props, we're declaring task is a task. And this looks very pretty, very, very nice. We're getting that task from GraphQL types, which is declared here, except there's a sneaky issue here. When we render this component in a parent, we might be getting the data from our tasks query that we defined. We map over that data for all of the tasks, but we're getting an error here. And that error is totally unreadable. I can see that this thing up here is missing the following properties from type task, description and name, which is super weird because everything in this file looks like exactly like it should. The issue is, is that we've specified that this task takes the entire task. And it turns out in our tasks query, we're only getting the ID and project. So when we access the name, that's actually an error. I've changed things now so that the components are on the left and the types are on the right. The true type of this task is actually the type that's all the way inside here. And it turns out you need to do a bit of complicated TypeScript in order to access it. We need to first use tasks query, then index inside it with tasks, and then use number to access all the members of that array. And finally, we can get the correct error, which is name is not actually specified on the GraphQL query. We can go back to the GraphQL query, add the name, and then run CodeGen again. And then finally, after all of this, we will eventually get our error to go away. So this is the first problem that I find with these CodeGen tools, which is they generate a huge amount of types that you then need to know how to be able to index into. And you actually need quite a lot of TypeScript knowledge in order to figure out how to use this stuff. I do think in some sense, this is fine. If you set the expectation that when you use a CodeGen tool, you're going to have to do a little bit of typescripting around the edges. A cogen tool does not mean all of your TypeScript problems are solved. You will have to deeply understand that types file that it's giving you. Because if you use it naively, you're going to just shoot yourself in the foot. And yes, this is true for Prisma. This is true for anything that creates a big wall of types for you. The second issue I have is developer experience complexity. Let me show you what I mean. Currently, when I change the type of name inside here, we're not getting any updates over in the left here. To make this work, I need to add a new script here called cogen watch, which calls the previous script 
script, but adds a watch flag. Now, if I get that running, you can see that I can add now name into tasks and it will eventually, this error will eventually go away. There it goes. If I add description on here, I will eventually get, oh yeah, descriptions back on there. This means that I need to run my watch command on my code gen whenever I run my dev script. That's already a little bit annoying. I should be able to work on my project without needing to run any type of script at all. But it's even more annoying when the types file gets so big and your project gets so big that VS Code can't keep up when the new types are added. On huge projects, I've actually had to wait like five to 10 seconds for the whole thing to update, which is absolutely brutal. This is the main reason why tools like TRPC can advertise that they're no code gen, because in TRPC, it's all done through TypeScript inference, not through generating any sort of like extra types file. So what that means is you never need to run a code gen watch script. You can just change one file and it instantly updates in the other. So whenever I work on a project that has this code gen now, I get this little sense of dread because I know that I'm gonna be sat there frustrated, restarting the TS server again and again, trying to get it working. But is this enough to make me not want to include GraphQL code gen in a project? Is this enough to make me not want to use Prisma or something? No, it's not. These tools are indispensable because they help type the untypable and there really aren't any other options out there at the moment. So code gen tools should be in your toolbox, but you should go into them clear eyed. You should know that they bring extra TypeScript complexity to your project and you will take a small DX hit, but when they work, there's nothing like them. And just like TypeScript itself, they prevent an entire class of bugs. Thanks so much for watching, folks. If you like this video, then give the algorithm a little juice. Just give it a like, a little press. And you should check out another one of my videos that I've got here and a little face you can subscribe to here. You should also check out my total TypeScript course, which is like 20% off for like another couple of days, I think. We're really getting close to the end of pre-sale. So, mwah, thank you very much. Not sure why I just kissed you there, but I did. So, see you very soon.